I'm Dylan Radigan. I've interviewed nearly every CEO and most world leaders during the past 25 years. And now I'm bootstrapping. I'm turning my attention to the new CEOs and the irrepressible entrepreneurs leading the next generation of innovation in the world. Welcome back to Tasty Trade. I am Dylan Radigan. Uh, ideas to action. A special holiday series. A pirated one because they're busy doing other things. But all the same, it's a holiday series, Ideas to Action. Our guest in front of you, Jason Vandeboom. He's the founder and CEO of a company called Active Campaign. This guy's raised a ton of dough, helped a ton of people. Um, had his own businesses go from nothing to billions. So he's been to the full rodeo a few times. And has built a software platform to support other people that want to go to the rodeo. Hi, Jason. Hi. Appreciate I call it. the rodeo, I take turning an idea into action. And, no, like, yeah. you know, um, why, what even is the best first question for you? What was your first idea that you tried to put into action? Like, how, what is the, why do you think you've been successful? I'm going to, we're going to, your, your success is self evident. Why have you been successful turning your ideas into action? I think it's really starting with something you have some familiarity with. Um, for myself, I grew up with parents that had small businesses, um, just saw like an extra need, an extra type of care they gave to their customers. Um, and I always liked the idea of like building something to help help others see value. Um, not necessarily looking at it as like, we're going to try to get to X revenue or take on some market, but just starting with the idea that's somewhat familiar and having that commitment, having that passion to be able to continue to drive it, even though it could take years, if not more, to really see much of anything in terms of a return. So there's an Italian saying that says between speaking and doing lies an ocean. Mm. Yeah. And so I'm curious because, uh, again, they, everybody has a movie script. Everybody has a restaurant concept. Everybody has a tech company. But the number of restaurants and movies and tech companies and bigger, more ambitious structures, the percentage of them that go from idea to action is exquisitely small. Yeah. What's the difference between those that convert and those that don't? It's the, I think there's a lot of thought that you have to overthink, overanalyze every piece of the journey. And especially early on when you're starting to build a company or starting a company, that's the thing you should be resisting the most. And I'd argue, even as you scale a company, the reason why larger companies start to slow down more and more is because of that sort of over analysis and overthinking. And, and a good example would be like, you can go out and talk to people, go to a bunch of events, um, try to figure out how to start a business or how to uh, start working in a market versus you probably have more instinct if you're somewhat familiar with the problem than you should give yourself, than, than you actually give yourself credit for. Uh, and then also like, if you avoid going out there and if you avoid just sort of that slow, like just analysis and just getting stuck in that, um, you'll do something potentially different versus just copying what others have done, which is a true miss. And something that I've experienced through time of just like looking at. Are you kidding? I mean, what others have done is the foundation of planning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you don't want to mimic. I think uh, all too often, if you have doubt as a business owner or starting something, you start to think that everyone else has it all figured out. Um, and I think there's a really powerful piece of um, those that even may be your competitors that may look like they're doing really well. Um, they don't have it all figured out probably. And you might actually, if you don't try to just mimic, you should understand, but you shouldn't try to just copy and mimic what's in market. Would you say add structure slowly at the beginning? Yeah, um, I, I truly believe in that because the more structure you add, the more of a destiny plan you're going to have in place for your business. And you have no idea early on whether that even makes sense. So you have to have that uh, ability to uh, adapt and change things far more 
versus um, like planning it all out. So when I started Active Campaign, I was thinking, okay, like what, what do people do when they start a business? And I'm like, okay, they're like, we're going to need a business plan or something like that. And I, th- I downloaded a template of it uh, online and I think I got to page like two. And it's like, I don't know the answers for any of the rest of the things in this business plan template. But I had like the, here's the, here's the problem we're going to solve on like page one. Yeah, page and, one wired. Exactly. And then just like, and I'm just like, stop it. I printed it out. I have a copy somewhere I got to find, but, but, um, but so hang on. So you're saying yeah. stop on page one and don't add structure. You'll have a better chance of turning your idea into action. Exactly. I think where people really get held up is this idea of trying to get to some perfect state or trying to overplan the future when you don't even know how people are going to use what you're bringing to market. Exactly. You have a hunch you have to get things to, you have to build and get things to market quickly to start to understand where your fit could be versus try to solve for something that you you have overly planned in a way where that could potentially work, or you're just going to keep building and not actually listening to the market, your customers, uh, and what's actually happening around you. And so what does your platform provide exactly? So Active Campaign is a customer experience platform. So we help businesses bring together data, make that data actionable, uh, and then create experiences for their customers. That could be anything from uh, helping nurture new customers, uh, maybe how to use your product. Uh, It could be post-sale. It could be um, helping enable your sales team. Basically, anything that involves customer data, how do we help automate, but in a very personalized way for the customer, but also anyone at your business itself. And so we work with a lot of growing early stage companies and as well as larger companies. Well. And so, and you, I, mean, I think of that as like amplifying communication, clear, like a higher signal and a better and more clarity in the signal in, in yeah. terms of internal yeah. and external communications is how I hear that. Yep, exactly. And if you think about it, if you go into a small business, if you do business with a small business, they they know you, it's personalized, it feels like there's some sort of a, a actual personality to the business, the person you're talking to. Um, oftentimes, mid-market enterprise companies are trying to replicate that type of feeling. Um, you can't really do that unless you have all the data and understanding and are able to get these like one-to-one communications to really feel personal. And so how far, how small of a business, obviously large businesses, this is easy and the standard. I'm assuming your growth and demand for what you're offering stretches between wherever the lower end of large is all through middle into the biggest of the small. But I'm assuming there's a size that's too small. Um, not, not really. I mean, if someone's not digital, then then that would be, um, maybe that would be the introduction uh, to get digital as as they move to active campaign, but we work with a lot of brand new business creation. Really, uh, and what's interesting there is they will oftentimes build out more complex and more interesting customer experiences than some of the mid market companies we work with. Um, and I think it's in part they less, understand less structure, less structure, fewer slides. Yeah, and they they understand though they need to differentiate in a way, and so like obviously with their product they're offering. They're hoping to do that, but also it's the it's the buying experiences experience with their brand where they can stand out in a far differentiated manner. And then what they're renting, a, you're basically software as a service, as this is a like a, you're you're like a portal basically. Yeah, provide. basically a subscription platform uh, where they can sign up, start to bring their data together, um, and create customers. And experience. then you just start inbounding whatever they may have into a data set as a portal and manage yep. it. Exactly. Yeah. And how long have you been doing this? So I've been doing it for a while. I started the company in 2003. Uh, and about 13 years in, we were, uh, we maybe grew to like 20 people or something like that. And I transitioned the business um, from something that was more on-premise software uh, to what we're talking about today. And, and that's where we really found, we use those learnings from the first 13 years. Um, and then from there, we've really grown the business quite a bit. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do you mean quite a bit? Uh, we're about a thousand people. Um, we've gone from no customers on that platform to 185,000 growing businesses on the platform. Uh, and we're in 180 countries, um, which is uh, like for me, growing a business is like, I feel like you have to have things you're passionate about to keep you to actually be 
like able to go up with the ups and downs or the rodeo, as you put it, of growing a business. And that impact, that reach to so many growing businesses around the world is like what what's the central driver for me? In terms for you, you're saying the the people the the people that sign up are the most interesting for you. Yeah, we get to work with just so many amazing brands uh, all over the place. And so, do you think that makes you an a, an expert in ideas around you know things that pe- help people take an idea to action? I think we're helpful in a, we we see a lot of data points and we suggest a lot of things for brands. I'd experts an interesting one where I feel like a lot of new business owners have to understand that they are actually more of an expert than they give themselves credit for. We can give ideas of like here's what kind of works in different types of businesses, but if they can take that have a light bulb in their mind and actually like trust some of their instinct of like what they should build out or how they should interact with customers. That's where we see by far the most success um, for a new business that's formed. Why do you think that is? Um, Because nobody wants a a copied experience. Um, If you can, just like if you, like your platform, whatever you're offering needs to be differentiated to get any form of momentum. Um, The customer experience is, is growing in importance in that as well. And I don't think there's like, you can't look at your competitor, you can't look at brand A, B, or C and say like, this is exactly right and this is best in class. And if I apply that to my business, it'll work. Um, I've tried to do that before, like, you know, emulate other competitors or trying to follow what I thought was success. And oftentimes if you almost like tone a lot of that out and just sort of think about like, what should we do? Maybe it'll match up with what others are doing in the market. Um, But you can have a lot more creativity. You can have a lot more fun in the way. Um, plus, you can differentiate your customer experience. The other thing I think is that the field itself changes over time. So even if the plan from the whatever the plan was that you borrowed or somebody looked at may have been the perfect plan for that moment at that time, but that assumes that the entire ecosystem didn't change the last one, two, three, five, ten 10 years. So it's not even that the plan's the wrong plan. It's that you're miss, you're overvaluing the plan and undervaluing your present awareness of the environment. A hundred percent. Couldn't agree more. Hmm. Do you feel like people could learn from you, at least do you th- in other words, do you think you, I feel like the people that have the most, so they say that the, the, the biggest opportunity lies when the tide is moving. Mm. Right. And yeah. so, and that's whether that's from the agency side, whether that's from the software side, whether that's the lawyers, there are people that are only really around when there's action, yeah. right? They don't show up when there's not action. And and a service like yours is very much to support engagement on communication, which I find interesting because one, you prioritize community, high efficient communication is highly valuable. I mean, I guess my next question would be, is there any metric in in your impact before and after that has credibility or is it impossible because of the soup? No, I think it, it, it's difficult to have like a single metric. Um, We like in terms of just like, like people come to solve a problem, right? They're looking to find customers, grow customers, do something like that. So we're able to help um, track track that and show like growth of customer base or growth of efficiency for the business. Um, I think the more interesting piece is when we can give people these light bulbs and they can take them and just make them their own. Um, we've had millions of different automation recipes created in the platform, which are just these like sequences of communication and whatnot that people share um and they're they just all like an open source you're you're saying someone can do a pattern and then they'll publish it but isn't that taking someone else's work isn't that betray rule number one which is you know what's interesting with a lot of new businesses and small businesses they are far more open to sharing and ideating and working with other businesses uh, then in mid market, that would be like a big no, no. Don't take our don't take our customer experience plan, right? Yeah. Um, but what's interesting is those millions that have been shared, like, have been oftentimes with small businesses, and it's this. Uh, I think it's a, an important thing for anyone that is starting a business or running a business to know that, um, like, the ability to reach out and just like gain insight or ideas from others. 
I always thought of that as like, it would be this lockdown thing where people wouldn't talk to me or wouldn't share their ideas or talk about it, but it's far more open than not in my experience, at least in my personal experience. And I think we see that with our platform as well as how people are sharing them um, because they know that. Do you think that that's alone, valuable? Do you think that's valuable to bring ideas to action? Absolutely. Oh, um, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's uh really like kind of what you're talking about earlier of like the, what has worked before, what has worked for someone else won't necessarily work for you, but the more data points, the more like views of different ways of doing things. Plus, and I think the really important thing is trusting your own instinct as a business owner, as an operator, and not assuming that it's wrong. And I see that time and time again with uh, some of our some of our new businesses in the platform, but also businesses I just talked to and whatnot that are early stage. They assume almost by default that they don't know what to do because they haven't gotten to scale or they're not as big as their competitor yet. When in fact, that is actually like a, a strength if you tap into it. And how often are you able to communicate that right now directly to owners and startup people? That message. Yeah, yeah I, we try to both in the platform in terms of giving people ideas of like yeah, what I other you're doing sounds- and what you could do next, but also trying to build a community more so to bring people together. So just today, um, we have we have these study hall events we do throughout the uh, world where we bring people together and we just talk about customer experiences. And they seem like there'd be a, like a crazy, unprofitable, bad idea. A lot of people have told me that. Um, but the power of bringing some people together is just truly phenomenal. And just understanding your customers, getting them together to like talk to others to, to help facilitate that um, has helped our business grow, but then helped all these businesses. Well, you well. see, you have 185,000 subscribers, right? Yep. And I have the privilege of being a host for Tasty Trade and a journalist from New York, and we have an audience, and you're smart, and we have a booker, and you're, and so I get 20, 30 minutes of your time, of your attention, you'll answer my questions. How many of those 185,000 people get some version of that? Um, myself, personally, not not all of them. Not much. Uh, what? Not much. Um, but what we try to do is we try to take that idea of one my my view is only one, right? Um, a single point of view to a operator, new business owner has only so much value in my mind. It's about collecting a variety of them. Um, and creating so, an ecosystem with a culture exactly. that has that. And how do I build up a team that is uh, helping support that? So like for these events throughout the world, we have like marketing experts, product experts at those, right? And how do we build out more of that? But then also... The power is in the community and other business owners versus we will not have like the absolute best idea just ourselves. We can help facilitate both through data programmatically, but then also bringing people together, like tons of different views and ideas. Mm -hmm. And do you think that the obviously massive success in terms of just the numbers is a reflection of what do you think it reflects? What do you think you what where what do you think they perceive your value? The not even the the platform's value is. Yeah, I think um the value is saving time, having more efficient uh processes as a business, uh, and having more engagement with their customers. I think that's the value that that customers see. It's basically making complex things um possible and helping more light them. touches. Yeah. Yeah. Like how do you take something? And I'd I'd argue even the 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 earliest business has complex needs. And I think it's a huge fallacy to think that small businesses don't. And I see a lot of that out there, especially from larger enterprise style software companies um, that like to just think small businesses just need a Google Sheet or something. When in reality, what we see is like a, a new business, a small business is doing things that are oftentimes more creative more complex in a way um and maybe the audience is smaller but it doesn't it doesn't remove the value that 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 differentiation brings might be the most interesting one pager yeah Uh, yeah with 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 all the things that support it um and so what is your ambition at this point what what, if you what is what is your what would you like to create what's your first page look what's your first page today we're passionate about continuing to build a platform that gives people 
those aha moments, those light bulbs. So personalizing it more and more to the type of business, the data to give them suggestions on what we think and to help them connect in with other uh, people in the ecosystem, other integrations within the ecosystem to continue to build out. Um, we do some of that today, but our our vision of where we can take that is a platform that really adapts to the type of business, their data, and makes it feel like it's almost like another team member or another team within a business, giving those ideas and suggestions along the way. And that's a, that's an ambitious thing to go after, um, but that's truly what makes it exciting. I mean, I need to learn more. Active campaign is the name business and the numbers speak for themselves jason van de boom it's a nice last name van de boom it would have been like a good canadian hockey player yeah people like to really emphasize the latter part of my last name but yeah defenseman a good like calgary defenseman named van de boom mm, he'd be terrifying yeah i don't know if that's uh in my future but we'll see neither me <laughs> neither me at least you got the name it was a pleasure to meet you Likewise, appreciate you having me. The company Active Campaign, the name Jason Vandeboom. I am Dylan Radigan. You're watching Tasty Trade. Watch this. Ideas to action, more to come. You've been warned. Uh, more Tasty Trade right after this.